What's going on everyone, Mike here. Welcome to another Symfony Bootcamp video. In this video, we will talk about printers. This topic was requested by one of you guys. So if you have a topic that you're interested in, leave it in the comments below and I'll feature it in a future video. We can find two main types of printers in Symfony. We have local printers and remote printers. The local printers are the ones attached directly to the workstations and are used to print guest checks. These are pretty simple, they're attached directly and don't usually cause too many issues. The other type, the remote printers, are the ones we find in bars and kitchens, and they are the ones where we print menu items and drinks at. These are the ones that usually cause us a little bit more headache, so that's what we're gonna focus on today. In order to properly set up a printer in Symfony, we'll have to visit three different modules. The first one is the print classes module, here under the configuration tab. The second one is going to be the printers module, which is under the setup tab and can only be found at the property level. And the last one is going to be found at the RVC level and that is the auto devices tab. So let's start with the printers tab. And again, this can only be found at the property level. I'm going to open it up. And here are all the printers defined in my system. The first ones here labeled dining, printer 1, printer 2, etc. These are local printers. And the ones here at the bottom, labeled Expo, Grilled, Saute, Salad, these are my remote printers. We can take a quick peek at the configuration of the local printers, but we're not going to focus on them. So I'm just going to open this one for now. And we have a number here and of course a name. And the way we name it is just uh, to understand it. So this printer is attached to Dining 2 workstation, so I just labeled it Dining 2 printer. And the workstation here, this is what it's called a print controller. And I'm going to go a little more in depth about this one because it's very important. And next we have the printer type. The main ones that I see are IDN roll printers, or the ones that use an IDN connection, Epson RS-232 thermal roll printer, and these are the ones that use a serial connection. And then we have Ethernet roll printers, which are IP printers. There's a couple of option bits here. If this is a thermal printer, check the box. If this is an impact printer, then you'll have to uncheck it. The thermal printers are the ones that print fast and silent, and they're usually attached directly to the workstation. And then the impact printers are the ones we usually find in the kitchen, and those are the ones that are noisy and actually use an impact ribbon. For my workstation printers, I also have enable logo printing checked for them because I like my logo at the top of the printer for guest receipts. For the kitchen printers, I'm not going to print this because that's not relevant and it just uses ink for no reason. When we select the printer type here, then all the printer configuration gets auto-populated. But if you have a special type of printer that doesn't use the default settings, you can just change them using the dropdowns. And now let's take a look at the configuration for an IP printer. And this is our grill printer. So it has a number of course, just like the other ones in a name. And it has this print controller here, which is Dining 2. And the printer type is an Ethernet roll printer. So this is going to be an IP printer. So it's not thermal. So I uncheck the box and then it doesn't print the logo. So I uncheck that one. So instead of that configuration here, what we see is the IP address and the port number. Now the port number usually is 9100. You can leave it as default, but this is going to be the printer IP address that you have configured in the system. And this is the IP address you're going to have to assign the printer in order for it to work properly. Now, what I would recommend everybody would do is I'm going to go back here into form view and I would create a table where I would write all of my printers, the IP ones, uh, write their name, the workstation that is assigned as their print controller and their IP address, and then keep that piece of paper safe. This will help you out a lot when troubleshooting any kind of printer issues, knowing which printer is controlled by which workstation and what IP it's supposed to have. Now, you heard me mention a print controller several times. So what is a print controller? A print controller is basically a service that needs to run on a workstation that will tell the printer what to do. A typical office printer, the large ones that we're used to, already have print controllers integrated into them. So when a computer sends a print job, it already knows what to do. These small kitchen printers do not have a print controller integrated into them. So that means that this print controller must stay at one of the workstations. And that's what we are assigning here. To make you understand a little better, I created this small animation. As I mentioned before, we have local printers, 
and then we have remote printers. And this is a typical network diagram with two workstations and two printers. So the workstation here on the left, Dining Room Workstation 1, has a local printer assigned to it, and it also has a print controller named Dining Room Workstation 1 as well, and this controls both the local workstation and my kitchen printer here on the top left. Linking them is a network device, and then we also have a bar workstation here on the right. So if I go here at my bar workstation and I send a print job for a Caesar salad, my workstation does not communicate directly to the printer. Instead, you see this red line going to the print controller here at the other workstation, and then this workstation sends the communication with this blue line to the kitchen printer. I know this looks a little overcomplicated, but I think it's important for you to understand how the system works so you can troubleshoot different issues when they appear. If for whatever reason you send your Caesar salad printing from here at the bar workstation and then you don't get a ticket, then it might be an issue with this print controller here on this workstation or it might be an issue with the communication between this workstation and the printer itself. So when you're troubleshooting, you'll have to check both. And this is the reason why I said it's a good idea to create that diagram so you know which is the controller for each printer. So if my Caesar salad printer doesn't work, the first thing I'm going to check is the printer, of course. Does it have paper? Does it have power? Is it working? And then secondly, I'm going to check this workstation to make sure it can communicate both to the printer and to my other workstation there. If the print job was successful, then this workstation will acknowledge that it printed successfully and send an update to the first workstation. It's going to say everything is fine, the ticket printed. Now, because losing our kitchen printer can prove catastrophic, it's not ideal to have a single point of failure. Ideally, we would have a printer that has a backup. So in this situation, we have our kitchen hot printer here that has a backup to the kitchen salad printer. And the way this would work ideally is we would have the hot printer being controlled by one workstation and then the salad printer being controlled by another workstation. That way, if something happens to one of the workstations, it's going to take the printers with it. So we're going to lose our kitchen hot printer and the local printer, of course, but we will still be able to use the backup. So going back to our previous situation where we're sending a print job from the bar one workstation, the workstation will try to reach this dining room workstation again, and it's going to figure out that it is offline because the controller is offline, of course. So then what it's going to try to do is it's going to try to send to backup. So the backup is going to be dining room workstation two, which will acknowledge the print backup and send the print job to the salad printer. Now, I know this whole system is a bit complicated and I wish they would have made it a little bit more simpler, but I hope this diagram helped you understand the communication a little better and help you troubleshoot any printer issues you might have in the future. And now let's get back to the printers tab and let's take a look at how we would add a new printer. So the easiest way to do it is by selecting an existing one and then clicking the insert key. And we're going to select this one to use it as a template. So for the availability, I'm going to go to position 506. So it's going to be underneath my kitchen printers here. And then I'm going to check this box to use a template. And then I'm going to name it pizza. So this is going to be my pizza printer. So the first thing we need to do is assign it a controller. For the controller here, I'm going to select Dining 6 and then click OK. The reason I selected that one is because currently Dining 6 is only controlling its local printer. So now I can just add a new one. And then for the IP address, it cannot have the same IP address, of course, as the one that I selected. So I'm going to select .36. So all these IP addresses have to be unique, of course. And you will want to talk to your network person to see what... IP address you can use. Most of the time they dedicate these IP addresses. So don't just select a random one before you have a conversation with them. Once we're done, we can just go ahead and click save. And now our printer is added. So this is the hardware portion of adding the printer. The next thing we need to do is assign the order device. So to do that, I'm going to go back to the home screen. And again, order devices can only be found at the revenue center level. So I'm going to click at the Revenue Center. Under the Setup tab, I'm going to open up Order Devices. 
In Symfony, we can define up to 32 order devices for each revenue center. So you can see the ones that I'm currently using are one through five and then number 10. So I'm gonna use position six here and I'm gonna type in pizza. And then after I type it, we can take a look at the device type. So this is gonna be remote. And then the type is gonna be printer. The options here are gonna be printer or kitchen display, but we're not talking about kitchen displays right now. And then for the device number, I'm gonna click on the three ellipses here right next to it. And then in the list, I'm gonna find the printer that I just added. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down. And if you remember, this was my number 506, which was the pizza. Now, this is where I assigned the backup. If you remember from the previous animation, we were taking a look at where we would put a backup. Ideally, your backup would be the closest printer to it. So in my situation, the closest printer to my pizza is going to be the grill printer. So that's the one that I'm going to select and then click OK. Now, here in the order output redirect, there is no option for no redirect. The default option is no output which again, I think it's a little bit counterintuitive and I don't really agree with the way they program this. But what we have to do here is actually redirect it to itself, which is a bit strange and counterintuitive. And because I just added this, I cannot select number six right now. There's nothing there. So what I actually need to do is I need to save and then click a quick refresh. So now I'll be able to select number six. You see this thing went back to number zero. So I'm going to go back to the drop down and then select six. So add all the settings up to here and then save refresh and then add the order output redirect. If you leave it at no output, this will not print. So be very careful with it. Next, we're going to take a look here at the option bits. Now there are quite a few option bits here in order devices, as you can see. Uh, the easiest thing to do in this situation is to go ahead and copy the option bits from existing order devices. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight the option bits here for the device right on top of it, which is the dessert printer. And there are a few shortcuts that we can use in Symfony. And one of them is F3. If you hit the F3 key, what it did is it copied the option bits from the row above. And then if I click F4, then it just pasted all of those option bits on top of it. If you don't want to use the keyboard shortcut, you can just go ahead and take a look at what option bits are checked in the one above it and then uh, add them in this one as well. So once these option bits are added, I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to scroll to the right and we can take a look at what other settings we have here. All of these are grayed out. So we also have uh, beeping if we need the printer to be, but a lot of these printers don't have a speaker on it. So I don't really uh, mess with anything else. I can go ahead and scroll back and save for a final time. Unfortunately, this is not everything that we have to do. There is a third step to adding our printer. So first we added the printer and connected it to its IP. And then we added the printer to the order device and assigned its backup and redirect. And now we'll have to take a look at the print classes. We use print classes in order to link order devices to the menu items. So the menu items know where to print. Again, I know they made this quite a bit complicated. So hopefully this tutorial will help you out a little bit. So we're going to find print classes here on the configuration tab and I'm going to open it at the enterprise level, but you can op also open it at the property level or RVC level. And here we have our print classes. So the classes are a way to combine multiple order devices under one class. So for example, when I'm printing something that goes to the grill, most of the time I want it to print in the expo as well. So the expediter knows of this ticket and knows how to expedite the food. So if I open this particular class, I can take a look at it. So here we have the number and the name first. We also have these option bits underneath to print on the customer receipt, the journal and the guest check. Now, the journal is just an internal workstation uh, that keeps a journal. So I always have this checked. And then if you want this menu item to print on the guest check, then you definitely want to check number one and three if you don't want it. So for example, for some condiments that you don't want to appear on the guest check, you don't want to see medium rare next to their steak, then don't check that right there. And then for the output, we can take a look at what order devices it uses for the output. So unfortunately here, we only have order device number one and order device number two. 
So in order to see better what auto devices these are, I'm going to select here the auto devices and I can say new vertical tab group. Now I have a split screen between my auto devices here and my print classes. So if I take a look at Expo and Grill, it prints in auto device number one and two. So number one and two are the Expo and the Grill. So that's perfect. So now we also have our pizza printer. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add one of these and say Expo and Pizza. So all of our pizzas go to the pizza printer and also the expediter sees them. So I'm going to insert a new print class and then I'm going to let it go to position number seven. I can use a template for the Expo and Grill and I'm just going to call it Expo and Pizza and then click OK. Now the record has been added, but it's still selected uh, order device number one and two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck number two and I'm going to take a look at my pizza. It's order device number six. So now I have order device number one, which is the expo and order device number six, which is the pizza. So now that that's added, I can save it. And we can also take a look at the other print classes. So for example, we have a print class here that says kitchen only. And then we have only order devices one through five selected because we only had one through five previously. Now we're going to want to select number six as well. We can also take a look at the mods. So the mods use all of the order devices. So we'll definitely want to select number six as well, because if we don't select this, then the condiments will not be allowed to print in the pizza. So if somebody sends some instructions with the pizza, then those instructions will not appear. And we also want to do that for the priced mods. So we have regular mods that do not appear on the guest check or customer receipt. And then we have priced mods that do appear on the guest check. So for example, if you're selling a drink or something, and if you upcharge them for a double, then you want that double to appear on the receipt versus the medium rare example that we were talking about earlier. Now that we made all of our changes, we can go ahead and save and I can close this split screen. So we're back just to our print classes and pretty much everything is configured. The only thing we have to do now is go back to our menu item classes. And whenever we have a menu item class that needs to use the pizza printer, then we can add that there. So if I open one of these menu item classes, now here under the printer, we have print class, uh, we have Expo only. Now we will also have Expo and Pizza. So we have number seven available here. So whenever we're adding a menu item that needs to print in the Pizza printer, then we'll just have to select print class number seven. Now, if you don't want to create a menu item class separately for all of your pizzas, what you can do is you can use a print class override. So to do that, we'll open the menu item maintenance here and I'm going to click the search for to populate all of my database. I'm going to go to my definition records and we take a look here at a regular menu item. We can see that this menu item already has a menu item class of food assigned to it. So if we take a look at this menu item class, we can see that the food menu item class prints in the Expo printer. So if we go back here and we would want this pastry basket to print in our pizza printer, here under the definition record, all we have to do is go to the record right next to it, which is this print class override record, click on the ellipses and then select our Expo and Pizza. So now instead of respecting what the menu item class tells it, it will actually override and go to the pizza. So you can program both ways, whatever uh, is easier for you, either use different menu item classes or use print class overrides but I would recommend just choosing one and sticking to it. So once you're done, you can just go ahead and save. So if you want to test everything out, just go to one of the workstations, hit a quick update that for the database, and then you can go ahead and test everything out. That's it for this video on configuring your kitchen printers. If you have any other topics you would like me to cover, please leave them in the comments below. If you are interested in more Symfony tutorials, we have created an entire platform that will teach you everything you need to know in order to maintain your Oracle Micro Symfony POS system. You can also ask for help from our programming team. You can access everything by visiting simsupport.online. And as a special thank you, I am also including a coupon code for you. You can find all the details in the description below. 
leave a like if you found this helpful and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.